Seven minutes. So, you want to know how to play the Mastermind, Albert Wesker? Well, you may have uh, clicked on the wrong video, but don't go just yet. I have been playing him for you know, like a good few hours, um, and as a fellow sunglasses enthusiast, I think I can give you my two cents on this guy. So, uh, yeah, don't expect a lot, because this isn't just any other guide to a killer, a character, or whatever. This is the idiot's guide, and quite frankly, this idiot is going to be explaining how to play Albert Wesker. Let's finish this. So first of all, I'm going to be talking about Wesker's power, which is probably what the majority of you clicked on the video for. Um, his power is called the Violent Bound, and uh, basically uh, he can bound twice, or you can dash twice, which we're calling it dashes, you know, to simplify things. But yeah, he's got two dashes, his uh, first one being quite short, and his second one being much longer. So you're going to want to use your first dash to kind of position yourself, and then your second one to actually go somewhere. Um, this is like a very good power for just map traversal, um, you know, just, just because you can just go really far with your stuff, but you're going to be wanting to use it in chase. Now one other thing I should mention, um, Wesker can vault uh, pallets and windows, so you can use this to uh, just catch up to survivors uh, in chase, and you know, it's it's a pretty decent uh, looping uh, tool, as well as an, well, a killing tool. Now, what happens if you hit a survivor with your power? Well, you pick them up, uh, infecting them with the Ouroboros virus, which I'll talk about in a bit, and uh, second of all, you uh, smash them, slam them against a wall, uh, if you do come into contact with a wall, which will injure them. Uh, if you do not make it to a wall, you throw them. If they don't hit anything on the way there, they'll just they'll be fine, they'll just have the virus, but if they do hit like a tree or something, they'll be injured. And quite frankly, with the DVD janky hitboxes, then uh, <laughs> trees are double the size, so it's going to be much easier than you think. However, this also means, you know, janky hitboxes, sometimes they'll just slide right off of rocks. It's especially rocks, I don't understand why. Yeah, but just keep an eye out for that. And if you are wondering, uh, yes, uh, survivors do count as a solid object, so if you hit a survivor with another survivor, uh, the survivor that got hit um, with well, by the other survivor um, will get injured and get the deep wound status effect. Unfortunately, uh, you can't down anyone uh, this way, which is you know unfortunate, but it's still pretty good uh, for just slowing the game down a bit and dispensing injuries. Actually, a little uh, tip from a, a fellow sunglasses enthusiast. Um, try and throw healthy survivors, especially if you can throw them to like a corner of a map or something, because uh, they will just go down really quickly, you won't have to deal with like pallets or anything, um, yeah, life will be just a lot easier for you. However, if you do see an injured survivor, uh, try sma sman them? slam them against a wall, um, just because they'll go straight on top of your back, or you'll start carrying them instantly. Um, it just saves you like a couple extra seconds, and yeah, th that's about it really. Now back to his uh, Ouroboros infection. Um, survivors are gonna have to get rid of this using first aid sprays around the map. I believe there's five of them, and each of them have uh, two charges, uh, so they can be used twice. Now the infection doesn't really affect the survivor whatsoever until um, they reach max infection, which is when they start getting uh, drawbacks and such. Now, if a survivor uh, does reach full infection, you'll be able to see the white outline out like that's around their character portrait. It becomes red, and uh, this will make the survivor slower, which is like eight, seven or eight percent slower, which is actually quite a bit, just that you are you know decently faster than them as well. Um, and also, if they're healthy and you slam them against a wall with your power. Um, they will be instantly picked up onto your shoulder, which is, you know, very cool. So it's kind of like an insta-down, basically. 
Don't expect me to give you directions. Now for this uh, quick section, I'm going to be talking about uh, Wesker's teachable perks, with his first one being Awakened Awareness. Now what this perk does is, when you are carrying a survivor, uh, all survivors within 24 meters of you have their auras revealed, so you can just see them through uh, walls um, and all that. Now this perk is very good against um, altruistic squads, which want to uh, you know body block and uh, go for sabotages, uh, so you can kind of prevent this. It's also quite good if you have the perk Starstruck, which uh, makes all survivors um, exposed all survivors which run your terror radius exposed when you pick a survivor up. So you can just kind of run to them, get an insta down, and then you're sorted. Now Wesker's second perk is Superior Anatomy. And this perk is quite simple. Um, basically, if a survivor vault, fast vaults a window uh, 16 meters from your position, uh, you can then use the perk, and your next vault will be 40% uh, uh, faster. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't count towards um, Wesker's special vault or... Um, the legions are uh, fast vault when they're in their power, but you know it is just quite good to um, just catch up to survivors uh, quicker. It's also good if you pair it with bamboozle, which is something I'll talk about later. Now, Esker's final perk is called terminus. Uh, terminus activates when the final generator is completed, and uh, what terminus does is it causes every single survivor or every injured survivor rather to become broken. And if a survivor is injured uh, after the final gen is done, then they will become broken as well. Terminus deactivates uh, like 20 or 30 seconds uh, after the uh, well, one of the gates have opened. Now this is a very, very strong uh, endgame perk. Uh, if you want to couple it with things such as uh, No Way Out or hell, maybe even No Ed, just for the hell of it. And I know it is basically just No Ed, but you have to injure people and they're not... Stay injured, but whatever. Um, I'd say this perk is actually very good if you want to combine it with like a late game build for the Legion or the Wraith, uh, just because they kind of rely on injuring survivors uh, and just kind of leaving them to do whatever. Overall, I'd say Wesker's perks are very decent. They they apply to very niche scenarios, but they are very good at accomplishing um, the thing they try to accomplish when that scenario does occur. So uh, if if you want to go, <laughs> if you want to go for a pretty like niche uh, like meme build or something, then uh, use one of these perks. They'll definitely help you out quite a lot. You will give me an egg. Finally, I just want to talk about some uh, good add-on combinations and good well perks for Wesker. I'm going to start with his add-ons. Um, the like obviously the best. Uh, combination in my opinion is the video conference device and the iridescent Ouroboros vial. Uh, what the iridescent vial does, um, it makes every survivor start off with the infection so they have to go run off and cleanse uh, pretty much straight away, but also if a survivor does become fully infected they become exposed so you can just hit them and they'll become instantly downed. Uh, what the video conference uh, device does, which is why it's so good with this uh, other add-on, is it increases uh, the speed of what a survivor becomes infected, so basically they become infected quicker, um, yeah, and it just kind of incentivizes survivors to um, get these vials quicker, and they're just not doing gens at the start of the match. Now another add-on combo I want to talk about is the Lion Medallion with either the Gold Chalice or the Jewel Beetle. Now, what the uh, Lion Medallion does, it just increases the distance of what you throw a survivor by 30%, I believe. And, well, with the Gold Chalice, um, you when you pick up a survivor uh, using your bound, the distance of what you carry them is increased by 50%, so, uh, you know, that's cool, you, which will make it really much a lot easier to slam survivors, but also just throw them around the map. Uh, another half-decent add-on, I'd say, which is his meme add-on, funnily enough, is the dual beetle, which just makes it so... It's what does the exact opposite of the gold chalice. Um, so you just kind of pick them up and near instantly throw them. Uh, it's very good for, you know, like I said, the uh, whole injuring and zoning thing, and it definitely does help out quite a lot. And you get a nice uh, blood point bonus as well for using it, so that's nice. Final add-on combo I want to talk about is more of a stealth-related thing. It's the bullhorn with the helicopter stick. Now the Bullhorn, um, when a survivor uses the first aid spray, they become oblivious uh, for 30 seconds. And with the helicopter stick, uh, you can see 
any survivor that uses a first aid spray for around 8 seconds, so it's just really good for you know being able to find and sneak up on survivors and just get an instant infection on them again, just to well piss them off. Now I'm going to get in some perks that I personally like using with them. Uh, first one is possibly his best one, and that's called a Bamboozle. And now what Bamboozle does is, well, it increases your vault speed for 15%, but that doesn't count towards his special vault, or Legion special vault. Um, but what it does do is it blocks windows when you vault them. So this does include his special vault, and it's just very good for shutting down loops quickly and zoning survivors, making it a lot easier to catch them. Another perk I like using with him is called a Hex Plaything. Now what Hex Plaything does, um, once you hook a survivor, a dull totem will become a Hex Totem, and uh, this Hex uh, curses the survivor and they become oblivious. Now Oblivious is a very good status effect to have with Wesker, because um, he's a quite a quiet killer. Not sure if that made sense. Um, he doesn't make a lot of sound, um, you know, with his power, you just hear like a little <laughs> You know, there isn't really a lot of audio on the survivor's side, and he's not like Nemesis, where he is literally moving the earth with every step. Uh, so you can't, you, you can just cannot hear him coming. Um, yeah, he's, he's just a very good killer for stealth, um, and I just think Plaything's a very good perk for him, because it also adds a little bit of slowdown, because survivors have to go out of their way to um, break their totem. And now, another perk I like running with him is a uh, called Nowhere to Hide, which is just a perk I love in general. Um, but this activates when you kick a generator, and all survivors, I think within like uh, 24 meters of your position, so the same as Awakened Awareness, um, they always become revealed to you uh, for like uh, 5 seconds? Uh, well, 4 or 5 seconds? Now this perk is quite good to Wesker because you can just kick a gen and you can just dash off to somewhere else just to see if there's any survivors around. Or um, if there is a survivor hiding next to the gen, you can just block them into a room and just get an easy uh, slam with your power, which is just, you know, quick infection, which causes more slowdown. I've said my piece on infection already. Overall, I think Wesker is pretty good um, in regards to like balance and uh, just well, killer strength because he's got good map mobility. Um, good uh, chase power, good slowdown, but he's also good for balance because he's got good counterplay, and the counterplay is literally just moving to the right or the left, or you know, just just away from the Wesker that's dashing towards you. But yeah, that's my piece on Wesker. Hopefully, you enjoyed the guide. Um, I, I do want to make a couple more, maybe for different game characters. I don't know, but uh, consider liking and subscribing and all that good stuff. And uh, I'm gonna go get back to buying some more sunglasses because uh, m my ones just aren't good enough anymore. See you later, you nerds.